Hey everybody, I just want to do a video here on how to take a bunch of pictures and uh, some audio and then turn them into a video in Adobe Premiere Pro. So uh, let's just get started at it. So I'm going to start Premiere here. And this is version CS5.5, uh, but this is going to be pretty much identical for uh, CS5. Even for CS4, it wouldn't be uh, much different at all. So we're going to create a new project. And so um, the first thing we want to do is browse to find out where we're going to save it. Now I've had it in here before, created one, but I'm going to do it again and select this folder. And we'll just give it a name. And so we'll say uh, my picture video for what it's worth. So we'll just leave it at that. That's all that needs to be done. Now this is where it gets a little more interesting here is, is that uh, Adobe wants us to create a new sequence to put our video on and our images. So I want to go with uh, 800 by 600 which I think it's a good size for pictures because uh, the objective will be to put this onto YouTube and uh, make the picture that size. Now certainly you have other options if you're just doing it for a standard definition TV. Uh, 640 by 480 might be big enough. Uh, again 800 by 600 will work as well. So we're going to go with 800 by 600 in this case. And so in uh, Adobe, I don't think in Premiere that it has an option to uh, do that by default. So you're going to have to create it manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip the screen here. It's not doesn't really matter what we have, and we're going to go ahead and create a custom one. And so in here we have an option for custom. Now this has changed in CS 5.5. Uh, previous to this version, instead of saying custom, it says desktop, uh, which is kind of an odd name to give it, but nonetheless it is desktop in older versions. So if you don't see custom, uh, look for desktop and choose that option. And so we're going to give it uh, a frame rate of whatever we want. We have choices here. Leaving it at the defaults just fine. 2997 is a standard uh, length. And we want it to be 800 pixels wide and by 600 pixels high. And also we're going to want to make sure we set this to square pixels. And um, it's not going to be uh, interlaced. It's going to be progressive. So we'll set it to progressive scan and the display formats fine the audio sample rate now this is determined more on what your audio is going to be so if you know your audio is at 48 kilohertz leave it there and if you know it's at a different rate then uh, change it to the rate that you're going to be using now the preview file format is set to iframe only mpeg now i don't know if this option is available for previous to uh, uh, cs 5.5 so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to uh, Microsoft AVI, but certainly you could leave it at the other one if you want. And we're just going to choose the, uh, I think the, yeah, RLE will be fine. And so again, we're going to change this to match our sequence, our video frame size, so 800 uh, by 600, which is linked, so it automatically save that. And then we can give our sequence a name. My video pictures and what we can do here is we can save this as a preset so later on uh, when we come back if we want to create another one uh, with these settings then we have a preset to do so so let's go save our preset and we'll give it a name picture to video uh, 800 by 600 and so then you can give it a description if you wish, wish. Uh, but we'll leave that out for now just for the sake of time. And click on OK. And now, if you notice, you'll see you'll have a custom setup. And because we didn't give it a description, it doesn't give it one here up in the top. But, however, it does tell us a bunch of information about the, the one that we have set up here. So we've got our uh, frame size, our frame rate, the aspect ratio, the fields, all this information about what we set up here and so it says it has uh, three stereo tracks and whatever blah 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 um, so we're just going to go with that 
and it'll create a new sequence in our project for us. Okay, it comes up here. So here we go. So this put the sequence gives us a place to put our video, to create our video in, I should say, whether we have video clips or pictures or audio and all these things. So if you notice down here that uh, at the bottom you'll see the timeline. And over on the right, you'll see we have over here our um, video output. And on the left here, we have our effects control and our source and all that stuff. So let's bring in some uh, media. I'm just going to drag some in here. First of all, what I think I'd like to do is create a folder just to organize this stuff a little. And I know I'm going to bring in some pictures. So we'll create another folder for images. I'll flip back to my audio and I'll just drag that into the audio folder here. That's just a way to organize things into your into your project. And so here I have some pictures that I'm going to use. Maybe some, maybe all. So I'm just going to hit Control A to select all those. And then I'm going to drop those into the images folder here. And there that puts them into the images folder. So now we don't need this anymore. Um, now that we have everything in here, we can just simply drag our audio down to our audio on the timeline. And that gives us a uh, way to get our audio in. So if we play that right now. So you see we have some audio. Now, before I go too far with that, let's say, for instance, we only wanted a section of that audio instead of the whole clip. So one way to do it is double click on it and bring it up in our source here. And then we can set our in and out. So if we wanted our in to say start here somewhere, then we could click the in point here. And let's say we wanted our out point to be over here somewhere like that. So we could click our out point. Now that sets an in and out. You can see in the uh, light gray area here that that's what's selected. So now if we grab the speaker icon here and put that on our timeline, we would see that we only have that section of audio. So if we start and so that's one way to to uh, choose just a selection. But in our case, we actually want the whole thing. So if we drag it right out of here and in, it actually gives us the whole time clip, or sorry, the whole audio clip. Now, if we select our audio clip, we'll see that it actually is, looks like two minutes and eight seconds long. So in our preview window here, we can see that. And so the next thing to do now is uh, throw some pictures on here. So let's decide how many pictures we want. Um, I have uh, several pictures here to choose from. So let's choose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's choose 20 different pictures for this one. So I'm just going to grab all 20 photos. I'm going to drag them right down on the timeline. And so we can see here that uh, that puts the pictures on automatically and they'll flip. Like So you can see it throws our pictures on there and gives us a start, but it's not what we want. I'm just going to up our view here to fit the whole screen. And so our pictures are not fitting to the window properly. If you notice, uh, they're completely zoomed in. And that's not what we want, because if we were to look back at, uh, let's just say one of the pictures here, choose any one. So let's zoom in here. I'm going to hit the plus on my keyboard, which zooms in to wherever the timeline is, wherever the current time marker is. And we'll go to select the picture. We'll go to effects control. And uh, in the motion, you'll find out under there that it actually has a scale. So now if I were to scale this down, you can see that the picture is much bigger than the frame. So it's roughly 32 to 33%, 31%, somewhere in there. For now, I'm going to put that back at 100% because we have an easier way to take care of this. So down in our timeline, 
I'm going to select all the pictures just by dragging around them. Now this is really neat. What we can come up to is come up to our video options and we can click on scale to frame size once we select all the pictures. So let's have that, a go at that. And see what that does is automatically rescale all our pictures for us. So now the whole picture is fitting into the frame. So now if we changed it, you'll see that it automatically, anything above 100%, actually goes out of the frame. I can scales in past it. So I'm going to put that back to 100%. And so that's a perfectly great way to, uh, to add that in there really quick. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to take care of um, how many... Uh, how long these clips are going to be each picture because you can see the pictures are not lining up with the amount of uh, audio that we have on the timeline so each picture needs to be a little longer in duration and so we have two minutes and eight seconds of audio I do believe and let's just drag over to the end of our timeline here okay two minutes and eight seconds so, two minutes and eight seconds is uh, what? That's that's uh, 128 seconds of audio, and so now we need to know how many seconds do we need for each picture to be. So we brought up our calculator, and we have 20 images that have to span that amount of time. So let's just do a rough calculation here, and we have uh, one. 28 divided by 20, 6.4 seconds each, just roughly. That's just a rough calculation, so let's give that a shot. So again, select all your images on the timeline, come up to your clip, and now you can click on speed duration. And now you can actually set this in here. So at 6.4 seconds, it's actually going to be set, uh, we have... Uh, where 5 is, it's 5 seconds, and 0, 0 is for frames to the right of it. And so this goes into uh, hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And so we know we need 6 seconds and uh, 0.4, so half. So nearly half. So if we said that we know we have almost 30 frames per second. So if we said somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 12 frames, for instance, let's just go with that. And that should get us really close. And also it's important that you click the uh, ripple edit shifting trailing clips because then that ripples this across all the clips so they're all done at once. If you don't do it this way it's probably going to mess up on you. So give that a shot. And so there you go. It puts our uh, clips all the way up. And now if we take a look over on our timeline our clips go pretty near the end of uh, where we are here. So now the next thing I'd like to do is add some transitions between these. So uh, that way when they go from one clip, as we see here, it's rather harsh that the clips go this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all the clips on the video which is our pictures. Then I'm going to come up to sequence and I'm going to click apply default transition to selection so the entire selection will get uh, all these uh, transitions. And so there we go that puts them all in there and now if we play we'll see that we'll get a nice transition from one to the other. So there you go, that gives us a much nicer transition uh, between the images to make it a little more pleasing to the eye. Um, so one of the uh, next things I'd like to do, I'm going to collapse these images here, is I'd like to add a little title in here just to, uh, to give it uh, a little bit more professionalism. So I'm going to click on New Item, and I'm going to say Title, and we'll just call this uh, my title I guess or whatever we choose and you notice the width and the height are the same as the actual sequence that we're using them on and the time base the 
frame rate is the same and we have square pixels. So everything will be the same as your sequence. 